All day, every day, I'm looking for cool guitars. Even if I don't want to buy them, we'll just share them another day. These are nine awesome SGs. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. And we're going to kick things off with a 62 LP SG, formerly owned by Link Ray, you know, the guy who played Rumble. This thing is fascinating to say the least. It's got heavy arm wear, it's got nicks and dings, it has so many modifications, let's see what we can spot. So first off, a normal 62 SG would look like this. Covered pickups, ABR1 bridge, sideways vibrolo, reflector knobs. It's basically what we know and love yet today. However, swapping over here, things have definitely been changed. So first off, we have the removal of the trem system. So no more sideways vibrola, which isn't the most reliable way to get a warble effect. It's been replaced with more of a later 60s melody maker style, which was kind of an interesting choice because in doing that, they really increased the string length because for whatever reason, they put it all the way down here, probably to hide most of the existing screw holes. However, the longer string length you have, the slightly slinkier your strings will feel. So this does have a slight effect, or you could also opt to put a pickup right here and have resonant frequencies depending on what style of guitar you're playing. But for Link Ray style, I don't think he was going for that. We've just got like some sort of a leftover sticker residue or something. And the filled in holes from the original Vibrola. Looks like we still got the original knobs, maybe some light cracking by the output jack, kind of hard to see. That's pretty common on those. But our pickups now, the covers have been removed and the neck pickup is upside down. Something done intentionally, I'm not entirely too sure. But our next feature here that makes me scratch my head is, uh, did they move the ABR1 bridge? Because it's supposed to be slightly slanted the other way. It makes me wonder if this actually intonates properly and what all has gone on there. It must have had like some extreme post lean. They had to like fill and redrill it. We don't have much in seeing this guitar in terms of other side profile shots. But on old SGs, you always want to look under your pick guard because sometimes people hide things under there, like in and out of phase switch or coil splitter. Now I've got the headstock. Looks like we got more modern style tuners. Somebody put a giant brass block for our nut. Looks like that needs shaped down a little bit more. But we've got our original Les Paul truss rod cover. Headstock's actually looking pretty okay, all things considered. But now we can move on from the front to the back. Okay, this thing was heavily played because you've got the buckle worming all over and apparently it was neck dive city. He couldn't find out where he wanted those strap buttons. Eventually, there's just no strap button on it anymore. That's kind of funny. But okay, they put Schaller tuners on here. So that seems to make sense. Most of these modifications were done in the 70s. Kind of a strange serial number though. And as far as Providence, they provided us some photos of Link playing one that looks pretty similar to this. And it's got an 80s chainsaw case, so that seems to line up with our modification time frame. And according to the seller, they have more documentation if you want to reach out to them. But now you're probably curious, how much is this guitar worth? The quick browse on Reverb, the first two years of SG's LPs, this guy's asking 17, 24, 30, 40. As far as recent sales, seems to be around that 20-ish range. But they're asking $116,000. Most of that coming down to the premium of who used to own it and play it. Whether it's worth that or not, I'll let you decide. But the first time I saw this listing, I instantly thought Jimmy Page would like that guitar because he's a big fan of Rumble. But if standards are not your style, oh my goodness, this is a beautiful SG Custom. You don't find the Customs with the ebony block Vibrolas too often. Kind of similar to the Vibrola that we just saw, except for this mount's using a different amount of screws. But the straight ebony finish with the white pick guards and all gold everything else, with the extra fancy black and white blingage down here. If I was going to own a vintage SG Custom, it'd be one of these. Like, the white ones are cool, don't get me wrong. But this custom color, ebony, is phenomenal. And it looks great in one of these orange cases as well. But according to the seller, this has all three original PAFs, although the middle one might be an early patent sticker. That's very common. It's a transitional time period, just like the one I documented, the Ebony Block SG Standard that you can check out in this episode. Or you can reach out if you're interested in being the next owner of that one. But somebody has modified the wiring to have three volumes and one tone, which makes sense when you look in here because you only have one capacitor but apparently your original wiring is included in the case if you wish to go back. But they claim it to be the original factory black finish, although there is some overspray on the back because somebody was trying to hide their driver's license number. That used to be a common practice to put your driver's license number or your social security number, just engrave it in the guitar. That's not gonna come back to haunt you. But nobody was thinking about that in the 60s. But they are asking $40,000. I don't dabble too much in this market, but I'm sure it could have been priced crazier. 
on the topic of early SGs, here's a strange one by Rudy's. So we've got black pickguard with what almost looks like a brand new white finish. So obviously that's going to get rid of some of the vintage look. They removed the vibrola, probably filled in the holes before the refinish, so you can't even tell it was ever there. Our stop bar tailpiece is slightly askew, but at least it looks like our ABR1 bridge is relatively place correct. But there's many reasons to refinish a vintage SG, one of them mainly being there's cracks, breaks, and repairs underneath it, and it needed to be refinned to make it look good again. But for me, I don't know what they did with this headstock. It doesn't look good anymore. They have single ply binding instead of the multi ply. It reminds me of the 2013 Gibson SG Deluxe. Those things always look kind of fake to me. And this one has that same thing going on. It's not my favorite vibe, although I'm pretty sure it's really just the multi ply binding that's different. Oh, wait, no. Trapezoid inlays. These sneaky sneaks, this didn't start life as a custom, it was a standard. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. You know, this really reminds me of the SG Elite that we documented in this episode. They came in a white finish like this, and they were kind of a blending between the standard and custom. But this is somebody doing a standard to custom conversion. When you've got a story like that, having a weird headstock like that kind of makes a bit more sense. But hey, at least we have an original Lifton style case. Pink interior. And if we read our description here, it pretty much lines up with what I was able to deduced by looking at it. They're even saying it looks like it probably had a heel repair. So yeah, that's why they did the conversion. They're like, yeah, we gotta refinish it anyways. Might as well make it cool. But how much are they asking for this? Initially, 12 and a half thousand, but that has now been brought down to 10,500. It's been sitting for six months though. Give them an offer. Who knows? But if those were out of your budget, true 60s isn't your thing. Now nah, let's get into the 70s. Diablo guitars. They took in two. Awesome, early 70s SGs, back when they still had almost late 60s-like configurations. Beautiful wood grain. Some old SGs do have the grain train station stuff going on, and yeah, I've never seen an SG exactly like this. This side, yeah, that's pretty more common, but this has like a ringiness to it that's way larger than you see. But you got your 64-style Vibrola, witch hat knobs, full bat wing guard. But then when you flip it over to the back, you get even more stuff going on. It reminds me of my haunted Les Paul standard because of these dark areas within the wood grain. It really enhances the evil factor. But you're starting to get your wider headstock. You've got your volute. That's what keeps these prices down as compared to in other late 60s. And they change a bunch of other minute things. Oh yeah, and this devil guitar can shapeshift into this weird thing. <laughs> no, that's just a photo collage. Well, that's pretty sweet. And they're asking 7,000 on that one. But if straight up cherry's not your style, it looks like this one might have faded, or maybe it started a different color, maybe it had a refinish. I'm not entirely too sure. I don't have a lot of experience with the early 70 SGs. But this has got almost a nice tobacco-like burst to it. It's got nice wood grain as well, but not quite the same as that cherry red one. But okay, now looking at it at this angle, it looks like just a normal walnut one. So yeah, it's probably all right. It was just that dark lighting angle that was throwing me off. Yeah, that one's pretty sweet too. It wouldn't surprise me if both of these came from the same collector, liquidating some of his collection for something else. But ooh, that's got a lot of nice wear and tear to it as well, including the finish checking. And it's got all the specs that keep it cheap, just like we were talking about. Well, cheap in a relative sense. This one is 6,000. But if true vintage isn't your style, let's look at four modern ones. So here's an SG Modern that's a little bit untraditional, offered by Huber Breeze Music. Now, do you see what I'm gonna point out here? This side's dark, and this side's light. <laughs> now, what causes that is the angle of reflectance within the wood. I'm not sure what all the nitty gritty details are. I'm sure somebody can fill us in in the comments. But if you don't match that up, sometimes you can get these weird angles where there's like a dark and light side. And sometimes it truly is just the photo angle. Like this is looking at it from slightly above. Like if you were to change your viewing angle, it would probably look just fine. But these stock photos are not really doing this shop any justice. But at the same time, you want people to understand what they're buying. Just look at it from this angle. It doesn't look that different. But your flame will never line up because of that. It almost looks like you've got a plain half and a super flame half. But at the same time, someone might dig that. It's like that really cool spotlight special. Super quilty, the other half, not so much. It can be endearing depending on who's buying it. But following that up, we have a high performance SG. So the version that came right before the SG Modern, offered by a private seller in California. I had to click on this one because I could not understand what was going on with those pickups. Were that some weird EMG Zach Wild set that I wasn't familiar with that has weird ziggity zags on it? No, that's just a reflection of somebody's blind. And don't let it fool you again. That's not some cool striped paint job or really crazy flame. It, 
It's just regular. And you wanna know what's the crazy thing? The seller probably doesn't even realize what they've done with that. I get people asking me about certain reflections on some of my guitars that I have for sale because I just recently changed up my photo style. Looking at the top of my stuff, you can see reflections of my ceiling. I'm not happy with it, but it is what it is. But I had somebody messaging me thinking this was some sort of a blemish rather than a reflection of the case. And it wasn't on this exact guitar, but it's just one of those things, as a seller, you don't even realize how other people might interpret your photos. Our second to last one is just supposed to be beautiful. Being offered by Eddie's Guitars, it is a PSLSG. That stands for it's a pre-sold limited run, meaning Eddie's probably ordered like five or so of these, maybe in various colors. But it appears to be an SG Custom with only two pickups, and they opt to have abalone inlays instead of your regular mother of pearl. But you also get your flame maple top, which an SG doesn't normally have. They're typically solid body mahogany. And there we go. They were nice enough to give us a nice side profile shot. So you can actually see it's a big, thick cap. It's not just a veneer. It's just as thick as the mahogany back. But of course, our headstock also has the abalone. And we've got some nice wood grain back here with a cool custom shop case. It's available for $7,000. And our last one is actually from Music Productive Germany. This is another made to measure one where they took an SG standard, they gave it a cool custom finish and changed up our inlays. Unfortunately, we've only got one photo, but let's see what we can tell here. It appears to be lightly aged. It's got the finish checking going all over. We have aged nickel hardware. Despite paying custom shop prices, they decided to leave the ABR1 bridge. Okay, probably geared more towards a modern player, but I really like the 345 style inlays, the split parallelograms. You could also say it's going after like a Gibson Dove. But that gold finish matched with the yellowed headstock, it works pretty well. Although the cream and gold it's kind of a strange mix with the black, but it kind of works because those match with the finish and then the black matches the headstock. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed our solid guitar featuring Bonanza. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.